Thank you for coming with me today to the foot of the cross, this Good Friday. A Good Friday that is very different from any previous ones. We are no longer able to go as a body to worship in a church building, but we are still his church and we can worship now. Even in our isolation, we are part of his church. And we can ask him now to come into this time of reflection, to come into our hearts and our minds as we think upon the cross. And I would just like to read a very well-known verse from John's Gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. When we think about that week that began with Jesus entering Jerusalem to the cheers and the shouts of Hosanna, the joy of the people welcoming him. And then by the end of the week, he was taken bound, accused before Pilate. And Pilate questioned him and he could find no wrong. And Pilate turned to the people and he asked them, he gave them a choice. Do you want me to release Jesus or Barabbas, a well-known criminal? And the shouts and the crowd, they shouted, crucify, crucify Jesus. And so Pilate turned away he washed his hands of the situation. He washed his hands of Jesus. He would not take on the responsibility of the blood of Jesus on his hands. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour and about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying Eli Eli Lima Sabachthani that is my God my God why have you forsaken me We are living in very dark and fearful times. The threat of the coronavirus reaches across the world. And it reaches into our own homes, the safety, the four walls that we're used to. Suddenly, we are isolated. We remain alone, perhaps with a few family members but unable to have the human contact we're used to, unable to touch our loved ones, unable to comfort those who are fearful and full of anxiety. And we wonder how are we going to manage this? Who can help us? And yet we can, we can find a peace of mind and a peace in our heart, knowing that Jesus 
understands. He was alone on that cross. He knew what it was like to be separated from his father, from God. He knows what we are going through and he understands. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus' own words. And in saying those words, in the distress and the isolation he felt, he has taken on ours. He can take on each one of our worries our anxieties and our fears, our uncertainties. We have no idea how long this is going on for, weeks or months. But God gave us Jesus on the cross and with Jesus's sacrifice on the cross, he has taken our burdens if we turn to him. And I'd like us now just to, for a few moments, just voice your fears, your anxieties, either out aloud or deep within your heart and give them to Jesus. Let his healing touch, touch you and fill your heart with his compassion and his love. The sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out in a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last.
When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, they beat their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. The centurion realised that Jesus was no ordinary man. The centurion realised Jesus was innocent. We know Jesus as our King and our Saviour. That is in the light of the resurrection. I wonder, I wonder what his devoted disciples and his mother Mary, what they felt and thought, seeing him dying and bleeding on the cross. I wonder if they remembered that Jesus had said he would come again. I think possibly. I think they might have been so overwhelmed with grief and sorrow at what was before their eyes that they could not think to the future. Jesus was revealed on the cross as our King and our Saviour. And we thank God today that through his great sacrifice that we can come to him in true repentance, confess our sins and receive forgiveness and the hope of eternal life with him. I would just like to finish by reading the words of a Matt Redman song. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life and I'm in that place once again. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. You became nothing, poured out to death. Many times I've wondered at your gift of life and I'm in that place once again. And once again, I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Now you are exalted to the highest place King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. And once again, I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy, and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Amen. Amen.